Thanks for joining us in Geneva for the AI for Good Global Summit 2019. And my guest is Robert Kirkpatrick, he's director of United Nations Global Pulse. Robert, thank you very much for joining us. Thank you for having me. So Robert, Global Pulse is an innovation initiative by the United Nations and it's all about harnessing the power of big data and analytics uh, for the greater good, basically, in a nutshell. Indeed, no, that's <laughs> it. Um, Basically, we are a special initiative of the Secretary General. Uh, we operate a network of data science and AI labs in New York, Uganda, and Indonesia, with more on the way. Um, we partner with companies all over the world to get access to anonymized big data, something we call data philanthropy. It's now become a global movement. Companies looking to create public goods out of their data in safe and privacy protecting ways. Um, and we use that data in a variety of ways much of what we do could be considered R&D in terms of exploring the potential of the data to yield real-time and predictive insights that could be helpful for achieving the SDGs, improving humanitarian action, and supporting peace. Um, we build software, lots and lots of Python code. So we're building applications for national governments, for UN agencies that they can use in their work. Um, and we also do a lot of work in the space of ethics and policy. Uh, around trying to accelerate the emergence of policy frameworks to make sure that this is done in a safe and responsible way. That's a very interesting point, isn't it? Because when it comes to AI or even big data and analytics, um, you get the feeling at times that people don't really know how and where to start. So that's where you can help them. Yeah, we've, we see a lot of opportunities and sometimes, you know, we get a data set, we see an opportunity and we can actually go out to ministries of health and say, you know, we could use data from mobile phone networks to uh, see how a population flows, and that could be used to understand migration, that could be used to understand uh, the risk of a disease outbreak as people's movement spreads it from one district to another. Um, but increasingly, there's awareness out there. I mean, we're getting lots of demand now from, from government ministries and UN agencies coming to us and saying, we've read about this, we'd like to try something like that. Can we partner on a pilot project? Can we take something that we've already done together and figure out how to take it to scale? The demand is real and um, the interest is growing. And hence the importance of a multi-stakeholder platform like the AI for Good, for Good Global Summit because you can meet people here from government, uh, from the tech exactly. uh, world, the business world, and you can all work together to deploy uh, artificial intelligence for good. Yeah, I, I think this is our most important event of the year within the UN system. This is, this is an extremely curated, filtered crowd of people who care about exactly the issue that we're focused on operationally, and it's incredibly exciting. We've watched the AI for Good Summit evolve from the first, uh, first event two years ago. Now it's gone from sort of what is this space and what does it mean for us to a community of practice that's really getting down to business, sharing successes and failures. Um, and a lot of partnerships are forming all around us. It's incredibly exciting to be here. Exciting, and there are great hopes, but there are also concerns that AI, because it's such a powerful tool, could be used to actually enhance, if you wish, uh, inequality or could contribute to it. So how do you make sure that this doesn't happen? Yeah, I, f I fully agree with this. I think we're, we're thinking a lot about AI if you look at the average policymaker out there and saying, this is a thing that's coming and we need to get ready for it and have a plan. This is not a thing that's coming. This has been here for 10 years. The current generation of AI, which has been used for targeted advertising, has proven itself the most powerful technology for accelerating income inequality the world's ever seen. I think this is a lot more like climate change. We're on the wrong track. We've been on the wrong track. How do we make the right course correction to get to the future we want? I think that's very important. But at the same time, what we're seeing around privacy and the world of sort of ubiquitous data and algorithms is a great deal of justifiable concern that this data can be used to re-identify people, that it's very hard to anonymize, it can be misused in a variety of ways. And that's true. And if we can't prevent misuse, uh, we're not going to be able to achieve the SDGs. On the other hand, we have to be able to use these technologies to achieve the SDGs. They're also mission critical in that way. So I think what we have to do here is sort of rethink the space and say, well, we, how do we balance the risk of misuse against the risk of misuse, of not using this data uh, for public good. For all these years, it's been used for surveillance, it's been used for um, making a lot of companies a tidy profit, and it hasn't been used to transform 
public services and access to justice and education and health care, early warning and disaster response. That's as big an ethical problem as the misuse of the data. We need to look at the opportunities here and make sure that we have uh, regulatory frameworks around data and AI that create a healthy, generous space for rapid innovation while protecting privacy, while addressing bias and protecting rights. So do you expect data wastage to dominate discussions in the years ahead at summits like the AI for Good Summit, but not just, you know, other, other places where we discuss the importance of, uh, of ethical use of data? I think, I mean, we're already seeing within private sector, the data produced by the old business model has become the basis of the new business model. This stuff is the new paper. This is what policies and programs and business opportunities are going to be made of. And it's going to become the central issue, I think. You know, everything we do produces data these days in a digital world. And the opportunities to use that for public good are incredible. If we figure this out, and looking at this from a global pulse perspective, we're going to be able to create the socioeconomic equivalent of meteorology to understand what's happening in real time and to be able to predict and manage risks in ways that make many of the, the ills that face society today um, inconceivable to our children and grandchildren. And I think that's, that's incredibly exciting. But we need to get this right. Uh, we, we've seen what the alternatives are. And I think the, there are many, many dystopian futures that we know we don't want. So that's, for, for us, I think we, we're expecting to see this conversation be everywhere. It better be. Indeed. Robert Kirkpatrick, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you.